Uh, Let me see if I can figure out why that is happening. It's being recorded now, everybody. We missed last week, uh, I noticed, or at least one of the meetings last week that didn't get recorded. So I need to find out what's going on. Hmm. It's the same, it should be the same Zoom link for Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday, right? We can get started. I'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, all right. Remember to sign in on the doc and write stuff on the agenda. Looks like we have one. Uh, I'll be there. It'll probably take a while with Stipe packs. Um, so I guess I'll kick things off. Uh, any really uh, any new faces? Don't see anybody. Uh, any um, release planning updates? I don't recall. Well, I mean, I was absent last week, but uh, under the assumption that it wasn't announced, there was a patch release for Pack that was released last week. Um, and yeah, that should be out there. It fixes some of the output even further um, where there was a crash happening. Nothing severe though. Yeah, so shifted patch to the life cycle today. Congrats life cycle team and congrats pack team. Awesome. Uh, if there's nothing else on release planning, uh, I'll go through outstanding RFCs. Give me a second to share my screen. Uh, no static mixins as a draft. Uh, extension spec for builder from Dave. How are we doing on this? You have Dave here. I don't see him. Looks like it just needs approvals because it's got some approvals. Yeah, yeah, my understanding, he made a change uh, around my comments. Uh, it seems like Emily has added a couple more things that need to go in, but it is definitely votable right now, uh, Joe and Stephen. Joe, you may have actually voted before and don't realize that it's been re-requested on you. I approved even with the comments. I think it looks good. Awesome. I will definitely vote on that. And uh, oh, actually, before we go there, Natalie, I noticed your name is on there and hasn't re-reviewed. Are you happy with that your questions have been asked, answered? Sorry. I believe so. I, I haven't reviewed it quite recently, but I was okay. following along. Yeah, if you don't mind, can you uh, do a review where you put a number on it? Thanks. Sure. Awesome. Uh, Pre-release version and lifecycle experimental API modes. This looks approved by, let's see, looking for me and Javier. Is this just looking for approvals? My last question here, I think this looks really good, is just that do we want people to have to opt into the experimental features or not? In my mind, that's the only outstanding question. Is Terrence here? It's a question for Terrence. I don't know. I'm gonna tag him in this just to make sure make sure he sees it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and uh, I'm supposed to be labeling these with the. Does this need a label? So spec extension or spec build pack and spec platform or just spec something like that. I forget how the labeling thing works. Uh, this one's interesting because it's about a feature of the spec itself. And that's either like all the specs or none of them, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> well, I, mean, I think we'll we should skip it for now. For now. <laughs> yeah. uh, app mixins are skipping for stack build packs. 
uh, stack build packs is on the list today. Um, first thing we'll talk about, uh, build packs should be able to provide the default process type for an app. Anything on this one this week, really? There's some ongoing conversation about the migration path for pack users, given that pack is currently always sending a lifecycle, a process type of web. Um, so there's a couple of options that have been discussed and I think we may want to weigh the pros and cons. Can you uh, put that on today's schedule, please? Sure. Uh, next thing is their origin metadata. Uh, weekly question, has anyone talked to Paul? Is this in, it's ready for people to look at to approve. Actually it has some, some votes on it now. So maybe we're just looking for approvals here. Yeah, I think Joe's got some stuff outstanding, but questions yeah. too. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, experimental features. This looking for, so we've got some approvals on it. I think Terrence, you take this one over. Uh, yeah, uh, I was just wondering if people wanted me to just close this or what? Yeah, do we want to just uh, talk about it on today's agenda sure. just real quick to maybe finalize that conversation? Okay. Uh, offline build packages RFC. I think it's on the schedule, but uh, I'm still working on getting this to another place. Can that have a discussion. On the schedule, sorry, I didn't look back. I put it there to ask what's going on and how post and what can we do to help you finish that? Uh, good question. I, I don't have like a, an answer for you right now. You, you, got, you got 15 minutes till we get there. <laughs> So that concludes our uh, review. Next thing on the list is stack packs and if it's ready for FCP, let's, let's get it there if it's not. <laughs> yeah, there is, um, I know I had some conversations with Emily on it and then uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Uh, Steven had a question about launch Tomal, which I am happy to have, uh, the question is if the launch toml could be used for launch and then a build toml used for build, which I'm totally fine with. Although I do worry about uh, basically people having to write the same thing to those two files in 90% of cases, but um, not super concerned. Uh, it, could so you go this... back to like a snapshot toml or something? Um... I feel like now that we have the distinction, though, this it, be an uh, example here. it feels a little bit weird to put it in launch when we're talking about build things now that we've mm -hmm. separated yeah. them. What about like snapshot Tomal or something that's neither of those? Yeah, I mean, uh, regard, uh, independent of the name, I think a single file might make sense as long as yeah, I think you could still, as long as you would still have one excludes and then maybe you have like cache and launch similar to how we have in layer toml. Maybe it is a layer toml. Since we're talking about pretty different, like yes, the underlying functionality is the same. You're cutting up an, you know, some changes that you wrote as root and saying, hey, don't include these in the image, right? And that part of that mechanism for recovering things is similar. You know, it makes sense that the schema right now looks the same, but I'm not not convinced that it will always be the same. Given that you know, like the context is pretty different. In one case, you're like talking about generating a new image for where the build happens, right? Mm -hmm. In the other case, you're talking about for the final thing. So I could see us adding keys to it later, and then the decision to put it in the same file called the same thing with the same schema might actually make it a little harder <laughs> if we needed to diverge in the future. So. Um, 
I think I like I like reusing the files we have already too, since that's where like I think launch tumbles or slices live right now, and they're superficially you know kind of a similar concept. Um, so to me, having a separate file for each, you know, is maybe a little bit more robust long term. But I don't have a strong opinion as long as it's not launch in the case where you're just talking about build layers that could never end up in the in any kind of launch related context. Uh, that was the only thing um, yeah. I think when Emily and I talked earlier this week, you know. Felt like it was weird. Do we feel we need the build exclude now, or is that something that could come later? And the reason I ask is because for build, it is it is only caching. It's, it never goes into any like persisted image. Um, so the use case for excluding isn't. Not sure I have it on the top of my head. Um, the the use case for excluding is for being able to introduce that caching mechanism. So so that. I mean, the big goal of this thing is that operating system package installation shouldn't take forever every time, right? And a big time suck part of that is downloading the package indices, right? And keeping those up to date. Right, those are cached by default. So the exclude would be what you don't cache. The, the exclude says time. what you, you do cache at build time, right? Because it says don't include this in the, is that, is that, is it different from launch where exclude means something different than, any changes you make to the to the file system during stack packs bin build are put in the cache. So the exclude mechanism was there to support, for example, not putting some things in there. Yeah, not but, pull out the cache, yes. But you, is there a cache? Why would you why would you not cache anything by default? Because because if you cache the whole layer together, then you have to throw away the whole layer when there's a, a new build image, like there's an update to the builder that's gonna happen like, you know, every couple days, right? Maybe like anytime there's an update to the builder, you can't recover any of the snapshotted layers, you have to replay them. And so the, the that that exclude and, and cache mechanism is a way to say, okay, this stuff, but just this stuff is actually safe to, re, that's, to reuse yeah. so even that's if why the base image changes. Yeah, that's why in a previous iteration of this, I can't remember what it was called, but there was a, there was some kind of configuration for always bring this back. And even if you blow away that layer, and I don't know if we called it excludes or whatever, but that's what it was meant to be, was excluded from, uh, you know, the normal cache flow. The problem, the problem with having to be explicit about what you cache is that it could be really challenging, um, for, especially for a build pack that's kind of abstract and, and maybe doesn't know what it's installing. It might not know what to cache would be my concern. So I think, I think there, there are two kinds of caching, right? There's the caching mm -hmm. where you're making changes to the layer. And then in each case, as long as you have what non-item potent equals false, I guess, <laughs> the, the whole layer comes back, right? Um, and uh, the next build happens on top of that layer, but as soon as that base image changes, you can't you can't just take that old layer and put it on top of the new base image, right? right, right. And so we came up with this mechanism, just thinking about the launch case, right, to say, okay, this amount shouldn't end up in the final image, right? But but it does come back, you know, on subsequent builds. Um, and I thought the build thing was just the same as that, but without the without that, you know, exclude meaning. Um, or like, but with reference to the, the the whole layer snapshot that comes back next time, right? Like, don't include that in the whole layer snapshot. Exclude it for, from that, but include it in this other cached, you know, glob of things that can come back no matter what. Right? Cache equals true. So that way, like, if you had made a whole bunch of big temporary files during build and you didn't want those to get stored off in this separate layer, you can exclude them from the build you know, build layer. Right. But right. you can also but you can also say actually cache these permanently so you get the opposite behavior always comes back even if the base image changes because you know it's there. So is, is the my understanding different? All the time? I guess I don't understand like if I had like an apt one and it was doing var cache or something like that without the excludes, like even if the base image changes, the snapshot only includes the things that, that happened during my build pack, right? So what, isn't it always safe to restore that or is that not the case? Um, but we don't have a way of designating, like we, we could come up with a different model where you can say cache 
without saying exclude, but we don't have a, it's, it's like, it's not the UX we, it's there, right? There's, there's only excludes and then whether or not those excludes are cached. Um, yeah, somewhat with, radical process suggestion here. Because it's been hard to get the stack packs all the way through, because there's so many details and points of things to talk about. What if we just cut everything that wasn't necessary out entirely? Like, yes, to make this usable in the long run, we need caching, but it might be easier to think about having a stack pack cache RFC and just removing all of it from this one. I don't, I don't know if I'd want to expose the feature to build pack authors until it's there, but if we want to just build the RFC into things we can implement in that order and get integrated experimentally. Well, since we're so close to approving the experimental API, right, this RFC could be about the first version of an experimental feature. And we know we're going to need to elaborate on it over time. I think it might help us make progress because I feel like just the number of things in this RFC makes it hard to make progress. And it's also hard to like keep all the context in our heads about each point that we've been discussing. If we were earlier in the process, I would very strongly agree, but I, I kind of feel like I was ready to say like, this is ready to go. <laughs> but um, I want to make sure that we're not all, we don't all agree and are just confused about some of the details, if that makes sense. Um, before we I'm say about the opposite, which is we're going to think we agree, but people are going to have different ideas about what we agreed on, um, which will be harder later. And like, yeah, and I, I worry that that is the case here because my inclination is that everything is cached, like a build, everything is cached by default. And it sounds like that's not what you have in mind, Stephen. So it, yeah, it's a good point in mind. I think everything is cached by default at build, right? unless the base image changes and then it's not, and then you have that cache flag in order to get past that. But but I don't think there was ever an idea that we would cache the whole layer and then re try to rebase that on top of the previous image because we've that, talked about that. that distinction already. you just made about if the base image changes versus not like two mm -hmm. types of whether we restore or not isn't in this RFC. And we don't right. necessarily have the information being fed into the life cycle in order to implement that distinction um yeah yeah the current implementation just throws the snapshot on whatever is running if it's in the cache like there is no distinction today yeah it, that, i think that's the kind of thing that we couldn't ship right because it just doesn't work it's just like violates the, the underlying contract we can ship without any caching at all that's safe it's slow but it's safe and i feel like we've worked this out enough that i don't think we're in danger of saying if we approved it, we wouldn't be able to add caching later, which I think was the original fear why we didn't want to approve the slow but safe version of these things. I think it could help the conversation a lot to be able to break this up into discrete chunks. But, but instead of making the decision now, we schedule a meeting just to talk about stack packs um, where we decide whether or not caching makes it in or out. But at the end of the meeting, it's either we agree completely on caching and feel totally aligned of what's going to go in, or if the, if the case is that we're really not that far away from it, or we agree that it has to go into a separate RFC. How does that sound? Even if we're totally aligned, it might be easier in a separate RFC anyways, right? But yes, I can agree. I, I worry. Like if we take that and then put it over here and forget about it, and then we come back to it later and other things have changed people's ideas of what the other RFC are, right? Like it, there's a little, there's some risk introduced by doing that. I'm not saying I, I disagree. I just want to talk through what's there before we or like fully get some people together and fully understand the, <laughs> what we're talking about before we make a decision on it. Uh, when is this meeting uh, that you're proposing, Stephen? Uh, I think we'd have to figure that out. Yeah. I know Joey mentioned wanting to kind of do some 
subject interest group type, you know, like meet separately. Yeah, whenever, I mean, if, if, we, if that's what we want to do, I think that's fine. Um, just whenever it can happen. Maybe you should try for this week. Yeah, I can, or we can, I mean, I guess we could also hijack the tomorrow's meeting. If we, unless we're we talking about cash. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know if we have anything else queued up. Let's tentatively plan that and then I'll, I'll try to schedule something else if we don't think that's gonna work. Sounds good. I think that works for me at least. Um, are there other things besides caching then? Um, the other thing was the static mix-ins. I don't know if we should talk about this, Emily, or not since you caved. <laughs> yeah, I caved. I can see it. So, OK. Um, I created this draft PR to remove the static mixins from Bill Pack Tommel, and we were just kind of going back and forth on that. Um, but for now, they are included in the RFC. The, the idea, though, is when I talked to Emily about this, Build pack can statically define mixins in Build pack Toml, but it must explicitly state which subset of those mixins, including those or not, um, that it, it can provide dynamically during detect. Also, that the ones that are they're statically in Build pack Toml are just um, that's the part I caved on. I'll just yeah, I I was very eager to capitulate and do that, um, but then when I actually wrote it up. Uh, I really was unsettled about having something like stack provides in the build pack Tommel and that it meant absolutely nothing. And you could put it in there and nothing would be enforced by the life cycle. So I feel that we should either go with it's in build pack Tommel and it's honored by life cycle or it's not in build pack Tommel compromise being something like it's in the metadata and there's not really like anything. It makes a little bit more obvious that it's not enforced. It's just metadata. So that means we want to say they're only static providing mixins for stack packs. Is that the new conclusion? No, they'd still be dynamic. They'll always be dynamic. But there would also be static ones that restrict the list. That were uh, what strict? What, what did you say? There would there would always. Or I think the thing I care about is if there are no static mixins in build pack Toml, then we can't. You know, a platform can't guarantee that uh, any build can, or if there are stack packs there, there can't be any static validation ahead of time that a build could right. happen. And so, so we are, we are going to put them in, in build pack time law. Is that right? That is the current, what is in 111. That is in 111. Uh, but then, it's not a platform that, well, a platform could do that as an optimization, but lifecycle would also read that list of statically defined mix-ins and include it as part of the build plan resolution. But then they could, you can also add different ones that are Dynamic more than that list during yes. that are more than that list during the provides. Yes. So that, then that does not that doesn't work for the static validation. It makes the static thing not useful because then the, the, they could provide more than. That's why it's sort of like an optimization. Um, I, mean, I mean, personally, we I don't have a use case for that. Uh, I would be happy to merge one one eight and ship without that. So if that if that is a priority for a particular platform, like I, I don't know, uh, like maybe it should just go in metadata, and then it it's just a thing that that platform does. So I think are we talking about the risk where a some sort of tooling could create a builder essentially uh, where the stack build packs are not technically compatible with the stacks themselves. I, th I thought that was the original concern for that. No, I think the concern is that it's in order to validate that a app an app works with a stack, you would have to actually like run the detect phase. It's the pack validation today on mixins, right? Like when you try to run something and you require a mixin today, it like looks at the stack to figure out the mixins. And I think it was the idea that it would look at all these like build pack static defined mixins to make sure that they could do the job. 
Um, right. And, and I think we do that as part of creating a builder, even the ephemeral builder in pack, because you're able to include external build packs. And I, I haven't looked at this RFC again recently, but I, I feel like that was discussed and I'm not sure that stack build packs could come in externally. They cannot. Right. So I don't know if that concern is still there, but maybe Matt McNew has a different. It was idea. on KPAC, I think, specifically. Yeah. Was the was the drive? Because you didn't want to take in a request and like spin up a bunch of containers for detect to fail, basically, if you could prevent it. I think it's less about a stack build pack coming in dynamically, and another build pack coming in dynamically that needs a mix in that could be provided by the stack build pack. Now there's no way for the platform to know if, if any stack packs are involved in the stack, there's no way for a platform to know if a build pack is compatible with the stack, I think is the problem. It will know if it is compatible. There's no way for it to know that hundred percent that it is not compatible. Like it could say, it could say I am not compatible, but it's sort of a false negative because it provides the thing it needs dynamically. Right. But there's no chance of a false positive. I think the problem is that then when you introduce uh, when a build pack require or as soon as you introduce stack packs, you can no longer rely on the static list of mixins that a build pack declares in its build pack toml to say, hey, this the stack image doesn't you know support that. You could, so you could go through the list of possi possibilities and some might fail, even though they would have provided the mix in dynamically. And you might arrive on an image or a stack that, that does work, or you might not find anything. And then you would have to fall back to actually running the detect phase in order to get those dynamically provided mix ins. I think the really specific case is like if you introduce a CA cert build stack pack, right? For instance, now you're unable to valid. Now you you may reject CA cert's not a mixin. Yeah, but like lifecycle's not going to know that CA cert build pack is special and and can't secretly be providing mixins dynamically at build time. I don't follow CA cert build pack wouldn't deal with mixins at all yeah but it's a stack pack and it it, it can provide mixins like a platform mm -hmm. wouldn't know specifically that it must exempt this ca cert build pack from these rules because it can't provide mixins because we're saying that it can't provide a static list of or like there's no way for it to communicate hey i don't provide mixins if that makes sense because it could would our problem be dynamically. solved if the statically all build pack said was mixins true like, yes, it can provide make sense. Is that like the level of detail we need to feel good about this? I think just saying that you have, to, we already have a make sense too, which is like setting make sense to asterisk, right? Statically. And then, or whatever interface we came up with that, right? The ability mm -hmm. to say it can provide any mix in. If that's part, if that's a way that you can statically express, hey, you know, I could provide anything I want during. The build process or during the detect process, then you know that would allow a platform to say, okay, exempt or like everything can run on this thing. If that makes sense, you can use any build packs with it. The so in that case, it would it would just uh, yield a runtime or build time error, right? Versus something that could be done ahead of time. A detect time failure. Yeah. I wouldn't quite say an error. There's very sure, I'm not sure what the what the difference is, but sure, uh, I'm okay to yield to whatever terminology. Something so will go wrong, right? Essentially, um, or could go wrong. So, McNew, you drove this feature out initially. Do you? Um, is there, I think I'm forgetting the exact. There's like a bad performance problem here that I. <laughs> uh, I, was I think we're kind of circling on the actual issue. The, this, what we were trying to optimize for is like the pet crate builder case, 
when you have a list of build packs and you want to know when you're creating the build pack that that build pack never actually has a chance to succeed because it's missing the because there's no stack pack that can provide the mix. That's right. In the K pack case, I think there were there's some particularly like bad outcomes that remember we brought up at some point <laughs> where like if you introduce any stack packs to the build, if you can't know if they're if they have if there's no way to tell that they aren't going to provide any mix in the world, then you lose a lot of validation that is important. Like you'd never really be able to tell if a build pack could could or couldn't run on a stack. I think it's the same as the pack case. It just gets much more pronounced in the KPAC case because the builder gets created and you get very slow feedback until the images are failing. So I do wonder kind of maybe leaning a bit on Emily's stance earlier, whether or not this is something that could ultimately just be punted on and we not have to make this decision now as long as we don't close the door for it. I don't think you could take out the feature. I think you just have to say that we're going to make a decision about it later, if that makes sense, to get the RFC through. So right. that is what this this PR is. This PR removes statically defined mixins. But that takes out the feature, though, right? That doesn't say we're gonna. Right. It doesn't say anything about. It later. Right. Um, what that means, the implicate, like one of the implications of that, and I can add that to this PR here, the draft PR, is what McNew is talking about, which is it becomes more likely that you can create build you can create builders that will never work ever for any app because pack create builder cannot validate the mixins at create builder time. So could we punt on the dynamic mixins and just have the static ones to start and add the dynamic ones later because then it doesn't cause that validation problem? And then that way we move the decision over whether the dynamic ones must be a subset of the static ones or not until later. It also gives you a, uh, a place to just say, I'm not going to install this apt thing for whatever reason. Uh, what was that, Jesse? I didn't follow. Like you could, you could have an allow list of all the mix-ins for your apt build pack instead of doing a wild card. In that case, statically mm -hmm. to sort of prevent uh, build packs that require things that you just don't allow in your stack for whatever reason. The static list could also include that asterisk all yeah. mixins for the apt build pack case if, you're, if you do want to include that build pack. If that's the case, do we just not need detect for stack build packs then? Like, wasn't that the whole reason Detect existed for stack build packs was to provide mixins? Not necessarily. You still need it for like CA yeah. certs and stuff like that, but just no right. mixins. Yeah, this example here. Um, I have to think about it more. I think that might be okay, but I have to think about it more. The, yeah. What the heck is going on here? Looks like it got rendered wrong. Um, yes, I will think about that and I will open another draft PR and then we can merge one of them. How does that sound? Sounds good. Ho hopefully we, we can kind of meet more regularly to get some of these things resolved. I think we just need more dedicated time to sit down and talk through the uh, different cases. Um, anything else on stack packs or we got 20 minutes left for the rest of the things. I believe that's all from me. So unless anybody else has other things. Nope, but you could stop there. Yeah. Next one on the list is asset packages, which is mine. Hey, Dan, 
what can we do to help get this uh, moving along? Uh, I could probably get this to a place and talk about it tomorrow with you. Does that work? Tomorrow we're going to do stack packs. We just do a different day for stack packs. Or outside of that. That's something yeah, like, is, is there is there still stuff that needs to be discussed? Or, like, are you ready for changes and votes? Um, I think that I, there's still one thing that I need to update, which is some concerns Matt had about this working with KPAC. OK. Yeah, like if you could put those in and like note them in the comments, like I think we'd all be happy to just do it via the PR asynchronously for now and hopefully get it done before next Wednesday. And if not, we can pull it back up on Wednesday. But like, would, I am highly motivated to respond to you in any manner that you need to make sure that happen. All right. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Uh, next thing is default process types. Yes, uh, I can share my screen. Sorry, I'm just finding the. Oh, dear. So I think. Oh. Um, while I'm pulling it up, I think the sticking point right now is the pack migration path. Um, because at the moment, let me just zero in on the conversation. At the moment, pack is always passing process type of web to the life cycle. We added that when the life cycle started defaulting, or the life cycle stopped defaulting to web. Um, so I just found it. Quite a long conversation happening somewhere around here. And so, yeah, basically, like, if we're in a world where every build pack is implementing the new API and declaring a default process, if that's applicable, um, then pack doesn't need to pass web at all. Um, but if we kind of rip it out too soon, we'll get you know, a lot of application images that just aren't runnable. So we won't have a default process. Um, and so I guess the question is how do we make, how do we take advantage of the new feature while making the transition smooth? Right, and so the plan is that we're always going to allow a user to override anything that a build pack says generally. Right. So there are some times when having that flag actually is appropriate, but doing it as a blanket thing is no longer appropriate. So I think my question is what would happen if we continue to pass it, right? Um, and the web process type does not exist. Would it default back to failing or what it currently does right now, which is essentially worn? I don't think we'd want to change the behavior when we pass web, but web does not exist. I think warning and 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 setting the entry point to the launcher is still appropriate. Um, what is the implication of setting it, the entry point to the launcher? That like, will will the image still start then? You must specify the start command at runtime. In custom command mode. I feel like maybe the mistake we made was passing web from pack instead of defaulting to web in live cycle. Um, I guess the, the question comes down to, do you ever want to build an image that doesn't have a default process type? Is that something that people want a way to do or not? No, I think uh, yes. The thing, the thing with the launcher though is interesting. Yeah, maybe. Because I think there are lots of ways to solve this problem, but they don't provide a way for you to purposefully end up without a default process type. The only way to keep that option open is to then uh, is to basically have a, a harder migration, right? 
like we wait some amount of time before we take it out of pack and we put in lots of help text so that people, if their build packs aren't sending a process type can then specify one very easily. So I have two thoughts, neither of which are fully baked, but um, so the idea of the behavior changing for a flag, um, which I'm not sure that that's been proposed yet, but I would assume that that has uh, to do not so much with a build pack API version, but with a platform API version change. Um, I don't know that that has been part of this conversation, but it's would fine. you not agree with that? Which flag are we talking about? Uh, the default process type or process type. And what is the behavior change? So the behavior change um, in relation to, you know, I guess, again, going back to the idea of whether or not we would want the process type, if defined um, and not exist, fail. Do we, do we want to do that though? I mean, I think that was initially what was done and we uh, pack requested a change for that specifically, right? And I guess, like I said, I haven't really thought this through, but I feel like that's been talked about a couple of times. So I just wanted to make sure that whether or not that alignment was correct. If that if the that behavior process change, type doesn't exist, it's a failure. today it's a one yeah like i feel like that's actually correct right like we do want yeah, that I, to be a, a real world like i'm i'm with steven that there's an idea that you don't want a default process type but if you specify default pro, default process type that doesn't exist it's not like it can ever at some point in the future come into existence i think that is actually an error yeah i don't know if it's an error like if that error happened to me i would still want uh my image to finish exporting right I, it's not like an error that i want to drop hard for i kind of want to know it happened and then i can run it with a different process type which makes it more of a worn situation i don't want it to like barf because so what if you specify one that doesn't exist you warn and set it to launcher yeah that's what I would want as a user. Maybe. What's your use case? Sorry, what, what's, ahead, your, what's your use case for, you said, I want this to be my default process type explicitly when you ran pack and then you get an image at the other end where none of the build packs added that. Why Why is that image still useful to you? Why, why wouldn't you want it to just fail? You know, maybe I pulled a new version of the build pack and they changed the name of the process type I was trying to set. I'm like, oh, I didn't set my process type correctly but I can run it with the process type. Like it's not necessarily. Yeah, but like like failure. think about trying to use it in a Kate's scenario. Like you've set the entry point somewhere else, right? Like it's just not like, you're gonna have to make a huge amount of change to make that work. In, in CI, I would really want this to fail. If the build pack changes the process type upstream, I'd want a red pipeline saying, oh, I gotta, I gotta fix this so it works. I wouldn't wanna like see a warning that I don't notice. And then the images that get deployed to production suddenly, you know, don't have default processes or whatever, right? It I, seems like it's really an error case. I think the context probably matters of like how you're using it. Cause I agree with like what Steven's saying, like in a CI pipeline, I definitely want to error. But if I'm doing like a pack build locally and say, I maybe I even just like typoed the default process thing and it didn't exist. Like I misspelled web or whatever, right? Uh, I probably, potentially still want the image because I don't want to pay the cost to rebuild it if I'm just like testing a thing locally, right? Like just to get the default process thing. Like that's not the thing I'm interested in the change of why I'm building. It's probably not why I want to, like, I don't want to have to like throw all that stuff away and rebuild. Yeah, but like that feels like a hyper optimization for a, uh, for a typo. And I wonder if like something, uh, some stuff came up with the, the, the boot team recently and we had a discussion about the idea of potentially incremental caching. Like they, they were running into the problem where they were doing something very, very expensive towards the end of a build. And then it ended up throwing away something very expensive at the beginning of the build. 
And I wonder if the same kind of thing is like, if we were saying as a build pack passes, all the stuff that was cached, all the layer, like we do that kind of export, that'd be okay. And then the very last thing that happens is you attempt to set the default process type and that's wrong. There's a failure there. We don't create an image, but if you had to go rebuild it again, you're not really starting from scratch at that point. Most of those caches are gonna hit on your way there. And the last thing of setting the proper default process type is you know quick and easy as you go from there. I was going to say exactly that. The problem seems like our caching isn't is is you know has a deficiency in that it's not you know you have to throw the whole thing away if there's something at the very last thing ends. And the way we should fix that isn't make the failures at the end not really failures and export images that don't you know look exactly like what you requested, but actually make the caching thing you know efficient enough that you can. Yeah, use I'm it convinced by that. Yes, yeah. I think this is a problem that we should solve separately. Um, is like. Yeah, so my my wonder about this is, can we divide this into two halves, right? Um, and basically say, uh, and go against everything I believe and actually code the default of web into, um, into the life cycle. And basically say, if you are uh, on the platform API side, Pack can say, okay, like as long as I'm working on platform up to some point, I'm going to pass in dash web every single time. And then when I move beyond whatever the spec limit inflection point is, I will stop passing in anything at all, right? I, unless it's actually requested by the user. So like behave appropriately from that direction. And then on the build pack side, say after the inflection point where we expect build packs to be setting their own default process types, they do that. But if it's before, assume it's web. That so I guess that's why I wanted to tie this in, right? Is if we could make a platform API change that makes this distinction very, you know, I, I guess pronounced, then it not only addresses it for pack, but it addresses this for other platforms like Tekton, which are also gonna be passing in web. Default process, because uh, default process type is only a build pack spec, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, that's what I was saying. Isn't, isn't this a build pack API change? Mostly? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and the, again, why I'm trying to kind of maybe reel this in for helping ease some of this. Yep. I, um, I could be very strongly persuaded that we should have a platform spec change related to this. What is, I, I guess, uh, I'm interested in Jesse's suggestion of the if we're if there's build packs that uh, basically are on the old spec, we just default to web. Yeah, that's that. That was the second half of what I was describing. Yeah, so it sounds yeah. pretty similar to what you're suggesting. Is that not yeah. good enough? Uh, I think you also need a platform spec to help. Otherwise, it sort of bleeds through because at some point pack has to stop sending web every single time and only send web when it actually means the user did something and the only way that pack knows the day that it should stop doing that is um if there's a platform api change i mean i guess i could do an inflection on the life cycle version potentially as well but i think an api change is the appropriate way to do that because right, so imagine imagine we do Jesse's thing, right? Like the early ones all assume web, but the later ones don't assume web, right? They have, you know, executable jar and they have war file or something like that, right? Well, if pack's still slamming in dash, you know, default process type web, like that perk that bleeds through into the build pack implementations themselves, because they're supposed to, like lifecycle's supposed to honor that thing coming in. And then do our failure as we're describing, where every time you run pack and it sends web and I don't define a web process type, it's going to fail for every single one of those builds. Sure. So you have Again, to I, fundamentally, idea. you have to give the life cycle an, a, a, an inflection point so it knows to stop sending web every time. The easiest thing for users, even if it's not the most beautiful, would be to change the platform API so that if no build pack specifies a process type, you get web regardless of what the platform does. Like the life cycle has a default process type web. And then the feature that's missing is you can't basically create an image that has no default process, but that could be a special value that you pass the process type. You know, we have a process type flag and you could pass none or something. Like it's a little ugly, but it would 
keep all the options open and work pretty smoothly for users as they exist now. Yeah, I guess I, I just don't want the... to codify web as a default beyond. Sorry, go ahead, Terrence. Oh, I. That's I mean, why I we moved a... it to platform to begin with, but it was a default in Lifecycle for every platform API up until 09 came out, right? And in some ways, almost nobody has actually moved on to the one where it's not a default in Lifecycle anymore. I'm not sure like we can totally get away from this. I, I like it as an improvement I like it. I like the improvement that we were aiming to do by removing it as a default, and I don't want to walk back on that. Much uh, time. I, I Where feel I like am we're going to end walk up back is if. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to kind of uh, point this out. I think we're going to end up in the case where we might do some things that we'll later wish to have included for 1.0 or, you know, and add to that list of things that we want to change, even if just for aesthetic purposes, right? Like, I don't think we want a special uh, value for the process type. I think we all agree that's not ideal aesthetically, even though it could technically solve the problem. Right, so, so the, the, the thing I was trying to say as my network broke up um, is I, I don't want to walk backwards from that idea that like, we don't like this as a default. Where I am willing to caveat is for compatibility for a temporary period to get us to the other side of that, having it as part of the life cycle shimming all of these things together, I'm okay. But like when we get to 1.0, it shouldn't be there anymore. We should be saying like, this was always a compatibility to get us to the way that pack used to work, the way the life cycle used to work. And now the end state is there is no default and no one expects there to be a default. Um, I guess my suggestion in the RFC was, uh, is there just a way that we need to differentiate between a platform default versus a user default? Like if packages say default to web, does that move the needle? That was one of the suggestions I had, sort of a difference between a use this process type and a fallback on this process type. Flag. Right. Yep. So like you could still get the no launcher thing where it's like, if platform says web, it doesn't know what the build packs are specifying, but then you still get that compatibility thing and it doesn't have to fail the build. But if a user specifies web and it doesn't exist, then you would fail the build. I think that makes sense. You don't get a, if pack is always doing this, you don't, it's not easy to create an image with no default, but it seems like that's not something people care about that much anyways. Right. What do you mean I don't by know, like, the, I, I not think easy. that's a, a feature we should have is creating one without a default and like adding another flag you're talking about an inflect you're getting a new platform API so I think like if platform API is on the table you don't need to introduce the second flag well I think you need the second flag to say Right now we call it the default process type. But let's change mm -hmm. our language and call it the process type, user provided process type. And then a platform provided default process type that only happens if build packs don't provide one. We can add a flag, change the platform API. This solves packs problem. This and... problem is though there. Hmm? What is packs problem there? Well, pack can move from the process type flag to the default process type flag, and then its preference only takes effect if there's no the pack provided process type. But and it can it's do the exact keyed off the platform can, API. But it can do the exact same thing by if the platform API changes, it can just stop setting default process type completely until a user without. But, but we wanted to keep web out of the life cycle, right? This allows web not to be part of the life cycle yeah. defaults, right? Yeah, but like, but by the time we've gotten to that, I think having a single flag and baking that default in as a transitional default to get us across the, the hump on the build pack implementations, I think is the better way to do it. But like, when does that go away, right? Because people could start adopting the new API. And then if we take out 
the transitional default, even though they're using the new build back API, if they're not setting a default process, people could still be heavily relying on the web stuff. Warn, big yellow warnings. Warn when build packs don't provide a default. Yeah, and that we have chosen this one and that will not happen forever. Your build packs need to set a default process type. Is that annoying if your build pack never intended to set a default process type? It's going to have to move to a new version of the API at some point in the going to. I guess the danger, though, is that specifying a process as the default is always sort of an optional behavior. So you could get into a case where, you know, popular build packs choose not to set a default process. And yet that is the build pack that we would like to have set a default process. And there's really no way to coerce build pack authors to make yeah. those changes. I mean, yeah, can't right. you hypothetically, no, I think we ruled this out. I was going to say, um, if it was similar to the uh, proc file, right, where at the end you could always attach this build pack that could set the default process type from another thing, but I think that's not how this works. No. As uh, Terrence points out, we are we are at time here. Um, yeah. What's the best we, way to, I guess, before we end, like close a loop on we just need to get some people in a room to talk about it some more so natalie's not hanging forever on this rfc yeah natalie can you pull it out of uh well it's not in the rfc i think today right yeah sorry but... no uh pull the discussion down so that you have to find it <laughs> like i was trying to uh, maybe it's okay. Yeah, we we should probably again try and do this asynchronously. Okay. Then we still had experimental API one on the list of. Yeah, it's not, it's not. It's not super week. urgent, so it's fine. Thanks, everybody. Good evening.